Good evening. Greetings. The Lord is with you. It's, uh, I think, a minute after, a couple minutes after seven, and I clicked on a minute or two late, so I'll wait for some people to uh, join in. I'm glad to be with you today. Good evening, Priscilla and Shirley and others who are watching. Hi, Jill. Well, um, I'd like to uh, begin then. Uh, the people are coming on and, and we'll uh, begin as we always do, under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is, of course, a faith statement and uh, um, that's everything to do with our reading that we have today for the second half of our first lesson for this coming Sunday. The lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 20. Yesterday we had verses 7 through, e through 10, and today we have 11 through 13. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can join together, um, even across the miles this evening, and uh, throughout the area. And Lord, in our journey of faith, we have some days that are difficult. And we try to go in the strength that we have and we run dry. Thank you for the honest words of Jeremiah that we encountered yesterday when he had run out of his resources. We also thank you for the word that we have today. But there is another word, a um, word of hope. Help us to see that and experience it in our lives and to be able to share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, good evening, Karen and, uh, and everyone. So, uh, oops, change the screen there. Um, <clears throat> so, our scripture reading uh, follows yesterday. And just to recap, um, the words that Jeremiah spoke yesterday are what we would in scripture call a lament, a cry of pain to God. And and the cry is real. Uh, here's Jeremiah, the prophet of God, and no one has listened to his words. God has had him preaching since he was a teenager and he, uh, he has been warning the people to turn from their sins and they refuse to. Um, he, he has at times tried to withhold speaking God's word because nobody pays attention to him. And every time he speaks, people yell at him. Um, and he can't because that word becomes like a fire in his gut, uh, welling up till he can't keep it in and he has to, he has to let that word out. He, he said of God, you have deceived me and I was deceived. You are stronger than I and you have prevailed. Um, he has even his close friends turning on him and looking for him to fail. And then that was really uh, uh, breaking his heart and, and took us through verse 10. Then we come to verse 11, so we'll read. Um, maybe I'll just begin at 10 again where his friends turn on him, his close friends. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side, Denounce him. Let, let us denounce him. Say all my close friends watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take revenge on him. And then today. But. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed. 
for they will not succeed. <coughs> Excuse me. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. What a tone, or a change in tone uh, from yesterday's reading. That also is true of lament language that we find in the scriptures. People have this, this heartfelt cry. The Psalms, more Psalms are Psalms of lament than any other kind. The, song, uh, the, the people of God can cry out to the God in whom they trust. Often feeling let down by that God, but having nowhere else to turn, they cry out to God in hope. Uh, Jeremiah uh, does this in the book of Lamentations. As he sees the city destroyed, uh, he uses that, that wonderful uh, but language again in the, in, the heart of, uh, uh, in the heart of Lamentations. I'm turning to it right now um, in chapter 3. The, the language is, was, was so, so harsh and negative against God. He has walled me in so that I cannot escape. Though I cry and call for help, he, he shuts out my prayer. He is a bear waiting in wait for me, a lion in hiding. He turned aside my steps and tore me to pieces. He has made me desolate. He bent his bow and set me as the target for his arrow. Pew! He drove the arrow into my kidneys, the arrow of his qu arrows uh, of his quiver. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me, but the whole book of Lamentations is like that, except in the very center these words of hope, but this one thing I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. Amidst all the doom and the gloom, and missed all the accusation against God for, not, for, for causing pain and not responding to prayers, Jeremiah says, but this one thing I call to mind and therefore I have hope, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So here we, we have it today in, in our reading. This, this wonderful passage of, of hope. Um, the psalmist is crying out in pain to God for the struggle that he's had. I was looking for my scripture page and it's, uh, I, have, I have mixed it up with something here, but I, I do have a, a second one here, so let me just switch to that second scripture page. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. I will sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. There is something that, that, the, that Jeremiah has remembered, just like he did in the book of Lamentations. This one thing I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. 
Uh, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Jeremiah sounds like he's forgotten God. And he has momentarily in his in pain. I, I think this is the constant story of Scripture. From the beginning to the end. That God is for us. And God loves us. And God is our Father watching over us. It's almost like this wonderful passage for Father's Day weekend. He is like a dread warrior. The, the most battle-hardened warrior that no one is going to want to fight. The, the story is that, that God is everywhere in Scripture. The one who will call us to come unto me. All you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And our old sinful human nature, prevalent in every person, fights for our self-autonomy, and we don't want to come to him. And so eventually, as we fight the battle on our own, we run out of strength. It's an old story. And it's in every human being, even in the great prophets like, like Jeremiah, even the great heroes of faith in the Old Testament, we run out of ourselves and out of our strength. We, if we're a dread warrior, are human, and we will fail, and we will fall. But there is a dread warrior who will never fail. And we can depend on our own efforts and run dry and run empty. But he invites us, when we've run out of ourselves, to turn to him. In fact, he invites us in Scripture to turn to him before we've run out of ourselves, to just admit that we are human, to admit that we fail, to admit, like Paul said in last week's second lesson, that we are weak, helpless, ungodly, sinners, and enemies. But those are exactly the kind of people that he saves. And we can have confidence as finally Jeremiah, after looking at himself and running out of any hope, he remembers the Lord. We don't have to wait till, the, till we're down in the absolute pit of despair to remember the Lord. But we can turn to him. And in that moment, <coughs> excuse me, when we turn to him, we will have hope and we will have strength and we will see our situation. Excuse me tonight. I think the allergies are, are kicking in. Excuse me. Um, we, we, can, we can have hope and we can, we can turn to him I see my son somewhere else in the world has clicked in. Um, so, uh, uh, Rob, welcome and good to good to, to see you today, and uh, or this evening, however I should say it, or tomorrow, whatever time it is. Um, but God, God is with us, and we are. Uh, um, if we could just remember that sooner, then. We wouldn't be overwhelmed because we've been trusting in ourselves. That is the ultimate idolatry. Trusting in ourselves rather than trusting in God. We, we work feverishly until we aren't getting anywhere and then we turn to God. We could turn to him sooner. That's the invitation of the Father throughout all of Scripture. We have it in our in our psalm for this Sunday, Psalm 91, he will bear us up. I found my scripture page. He will bear us up on eagle's wings. Um, I will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Well, we have that tomorrow, so I'll wait till we, we get to that scripture. But it's in our psalm today. It's, it's in all the psalms. It's in all the scriptures. In our gospel lesson for Sunday, uh, God cares for us more than this. He cares for the sparrows, 
and we are worth more than many sparrows. He even counts the hairs on our head. I can't, I can't stop myself. The, the, the scripture is just full of God's overwhelming watching over us. He is the dread warrior. He will fight any and every battle for us if we just stop fighting for ourselves. He invites us to not turn to ourselves as the solution to every problem, but to first come to him in prayer, to turn over our, our schedules, our day, our concerns, our family, our work, our worries, and turn them over to him. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light, and my, my burden, it, my load is easy, and you will find rest for your souls. Well, that's what happens here with Jeremiah. I was with a group of clergy today, and one of them remembered an, an older uh, professor from seminary days who had a group of seminary students uh, ask him how he would summarize the gospel. And he paused for just a moment and he said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. How is it, I wondered as I was reading this text, that, that, the, that Jeremiah was able to, at the end of his rope, remember God and turn to that wonderful but statement, but the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. How did he do that? Well, two things. First of all, there's the sacred story of Scripture that says, in effect, one word, one way or another, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. There are all the stories of the Bible from the Old Testament through the book of Revelation that tells us Jesus loves us. God is for you. And then there's also, I believe, uh, for Jeremiah, his own remembrance that God has seen him through many troubles before. And so God, because Jeremiah has believed in God and trusted in him in previous encounters, that God will watch over him now. I, I recall a time where I was talking about hunting with some other clergy and how my children were with me and how one day we had stopped and we still had a license to fill in one area of South Dakota before we journeyed to opening day in another the next day and I needed to get a, a deer that evening or we would have that tag unfilled. And, and at that time, our family lived off wild game. So it was a, a, a real boon to our, our, our family's uh, livelihood uh, to be able to get those deer and be able to harvest our own meat instead of going to the grocery store. And uh, so we paused and prayed. And the kids prayed. And we asked God to give us a deer that night. And before sunset, we had a, a deer down, cut up, and we're off to the next hunting spot. And the pastor said, well, gee, you know, you, you, you prayed about getting a deer. And well, what would happen if you didn't get a deer? Then I said, well, then I have taught my children uh, that, that God doesn't always answer our prayers with a yes. What was he wanting to teach children? Don't bother praying about anything? I, I don't know. Why, why not just pray about whatever our need is? And trust God to answer, knowing that God can at times say no. God knows more than I do, and, and God, God can figure that out, and I can take a no. But God is there to hear our prayers. And we can pray about anything. We can turn to God in any and every circumstance and understand that he is God and we are not. And instead of running on our own resources and running dry, running out, getting weary, getting for, feeling forsaken, we can just turn to him in prayer. Well, that's what Jeremiah does. He remembers that God has helped him in the past. He remembers the sacred stories. This is why we read the Bible. This is why we teach the stories of faith to our children so they learn about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Elijah on Mount Carmel, uh, Daniel in the lion's den. They just learn story after story, David and Goliath, just story after story after story of the Bible that tells us about those who have turned to God in their time of need and how God has delivered them. 
we tell the story of sacred scripture so that others may have some foundation to hold on to, some anchor for their soul in the midst of the storm. Somehow, whether it was in Lamentations chapter 3 or here in Jeremiah chapter 20, somehow, I think it's God's Holy Spirit, somehow, Jeremiah has remembered. That is the work of the Spirit to bring to our remembrance what God has taught us. And because he'd learned the sacred story of the scriptures, and because he knew God had helped him in previous times, he had hope. But this one thing I call to mind, I, I bring it to remembrance because it's back in there. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every day. Great is thy faithfulness. This is the God we have. And Jeremiah yesterday had, had gotten to a point where he forgot that. And remember we said, we just listen to people when they're there. And we can pray for them. That somehow, God will use that, that moment to turn them away from themselves. Because there's no hope in ourselves. Our hope comes from God. And we can use that as a moment to pray that God would turn their attention back to him. And maybe we can pray with them. When I'm with a person that's really down, I, I pray every negative thought I can, I've heard them express. And I pray it right out loud to God. And then I end by going to God's character. And they'd say, but you are the Father. In Sunday's Gospel, you love little sparrows. And you love us even more. And you count the hairs on our head. Who does that? Only a person who wants to know us intimately. Every insignificant detail about us. This is our Father. He loves you. And in my prayer, I, after praying out every evil, negative thought I've heard, I just turn to that image of God as our Father and hope that 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 might bring a remembrance to a person that God is for them and God is that dread warrior so they will not be overcome and and though the enemies will and he will not be shamed and and God um, will deal with the enemies Jeremiah says because I have committed my cause to you and he delivered the life of the needy. Perhaps you know someone today who is uh, facing some struggle. Encourage them to give their trouble to the Lord. And he is their dread warrior who will rescue them. He has promised it. I believe it. Jesus told me this I know. For the Bible tells me so. I believe it. I believe this is the message of Scripture. I believe it's God's message for you. And it's God's message for me to put my trust in him sooner than later. Let's end with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for everyone who's joined in tonight. And wherever we are, um, my son around the world somewhere, and others of us uh, here in Ohio, or some listening further away. You are God. The story of faith, Lord, we give you thanks for the stories of Scripture that were taught to us. Thank you for the stories of Scripture that we encounter daily in our devotions. Thank you that we are reminded we are not alone, but that you are the dread warrior who stands by our side, the one no one wants to fight. Thank you, Lord, that you will deliver us. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder that we are not self-sufficient, but you are. And we can put our trust in you. And pray, Lord, that you would bless each who are suffering this day, all who are worried that, Lord, you would come to them and give them hope. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glad to spend a few minutes with you this evening. I just so enjoyed yesterday and today's scripture together. And tomorrow we get into the wonderful Psalm 91. Have a good evening and God bless you. Bye-bye.